two committees. One is the national committee, and we also intended to establish state committees. So there were two levels of committees. Yap Son Chong was looking after the national committee, and uh, he had been president until we had the convention at Mora to think about the registration of Bijra and also putting in inputs into the constitution of Bijra. So eventually, Bijra itself was registered as Buddhist German fellowship, no longer as graduate fellowship. Because at that time, when you become graduate fellowship, you are known as elitist and all that, and we felt we didn't want to do that. And um, we were registered in uh, 18th March, uh, 1989. But after that, um, I became president. And uh, Brother Yao Sun Chong decided to, uh, to retreat so that he might pay more attention to his family, raising the family. So it is very sad news for us to hear that one of our early presidents of Bija has passed away yesterday. Uh, it's about 11, 11 a.m. yesterday because of a lymphoma of cancer. You know, it came quite suddenly. Uh, you know, it is, uh, maybe there were no signs and they just passed away. So maybe Bija itself, uh, we should uh, attend that way to show the respect for people who have contributed to the formation of Bija. Yeah? And that's brother Yap Sao Chong there. So that was a, that's something, the latest news that we have. Um, this year, of course, we have lost two uh, members who are very close with us in terms of being part of our committee members. We had Sister Ho Kang Ping, who passed away on the 28th of January this year, and Sister Wei Cheng Yen passed away on the 23rd of June. And um, uh, let me just go through Sister Ho Kang Ping first, because Ho Kamping has been associated with Bijia for many years as an ordinary member as well as an exco member. And her latest position was the assistant secretary. And for us, we consider it to be a good fortune to know Sister Kamping as our member and our assistant secretary for many years. She has been very active and she takes delight in going outdoors. And she's part of our uh, Bukit Kiara tracking team. Yeah. She has also gone for trips organized by my trade, uh, of which I'm involved in organizing trips. Trips of Buddhist heritage to Warabodo, to Sri Lanka, to the Buddhist pilgrimage in India, to Ladakh, to Japan, spiritual tour. And uh, when she's not traveling with us, she go backpacking. So you know that she lives such an active life. And she also tries to improve herself. Uh, she participated in effective speaking course, and after winning an award, actually, she was one of the prize winners. She also helped to mentor the causes for new participants. You know? So we treasure her support and her friendship. Uh, but I think it's one of the most uh, wonderful opportunities to be associated with an organization like Bijuya that promotes Buddhism. So you have a chance to practice, you have a chance to listen to the Dharma, to cultivate, and also to create good karma, because this is building a pool of good merits that will help a person be reborn in happy place. And because of our association with BGF and creating that, uh, uh, what do you call it, the connection with BGF, uh, with Buddhism, uh, to be sure in a uh, future lives, she'll always be close to the Dhamma and always having the opportunity to listen to good teachings, meeting with good friends and also good teachers. And uh, eventually, uh, this will lead to her spiritual fruition and achieve the bliss of Nibbana. And now let me say something about Sister Wei Cheng Yim. Cheng Yim has been associated with Vijaya during the graduate fellowship term. So much earlier than many, many of you, I could see some of the graduate fellowship members around, <laughs> but many of you are uh, much later. And uh, so she joined BGF during the 1980s, and it was then that she found a partner within BGF itself and established a family. Now, after associating with BGF, she has always been serving BGF in various capacities, including our ex-co members, and also as a fundraising uh, member of this building. I need to mention that because 
I'm the chairman of the building committee, as well as the chairman of fundraising committee. So there was a lot, a lot for me. And uh, BGI, before moving to this building, we were shifted something like six times before. And one time we were in a bungalow just beside a crematorium. We didn't know that. Very close to uh, the place uh, is where they burned. <laughs> where they had a crematorium. So when we moved to the place, we have to clean up the place. And I was cleaning it, going, how come this place is so sooty? So much soot here. And then after cleaning, I heard some music play. Oh, it sounds like a school band playing so badly out of tune. Oh my gosh, the music they play is bad. It's like it sounds like a funeral music. I didn't know that we were close to <laughs> it was funeral music. That was one of the uh, buildings that uh, we shifted in, uh, one of the places. But eventually we found this place and we had to work hard to, to do the renovation and to pay for this building because this was an empty building. And Cheng Yin, well, she has been in our committee, fundraising committee, contributing so many, uh, so many ideas. We work together. It's a small team, I think about seven people in a team to raise funds for this whole building, to pay for this building. And uh, so she's active and she makes a contribution with full hearted, full heartedly, without holding back. And that is the character of Cheng Yin. And because when she says she gives her support, she gives her full support right, through all the years. And also when we do fundraising, we will have to sell tables. Cheng Yin will take the more expensive table. I will have the other have the other set. Start pushing around and uh, trying to get help <laughs> to people. This building is hard <laughs> since uh, 2011. You know how many fundraising, how many years we were working on. <laughs> so uh, Chen Yin was not only able to contribute in terms of our community, but also intellectual contributions. She will state her point of view with honesty. If she disagrees with a point of view, she will state it. She doesn't hold back. But she will give her reasoning, a clear reasoning. And of course, if we hear good reasoning from her, then of course uh, we will be a sap, uh, we will accept it. And in the meetings and discussions, she's always cheerful and always having a positive attitude, thereby creating a good atmosphere for any committee. So her absence is a sudden absence. She's such a strong and active person, and like uh, Bhante Arya Sena says that he didn't think that she might be the first one to... She's actually left this world too early, given the, 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 the energy that she has and the intellectual ability, and, you know, very, very able, very capable person. And she was also at CIMB Bank, a regional vice president. And after retirement, she looked forward actually to retirement, living a full and independent life, fulfilling life, spending time within the activities to benefit others, and also for her own self-improvement. And one of the things was, of course, her joy of going to both the US and Australia for the doctors, and also grandma to see the grandchild. I think that's when she had to take some vaccines and has given her some, some issues because of that. So. Ah, we, so I have actually worked together with Cheng Yim and Hop Hop Kaping and I must uh, give our thanks and gratitude, gratitude to both of them for helping us. And um, uh, very recently I must say that uh, since uh, Cheng Yim has participated in the Summer Neri program. Yeah, but, <laughs> yeah. Uh, yes. uh, and uh, in Malacca, uh, in April. Sister Nui was there, Sister Doris Chung was there, and some of our female uh, EJF leaders. I think uh, attending a summer area program is a capping because for two weeks or so you actually practice, you immerse yourself in the time. And uh, when you put on the road, suddenly all the world, all the uh, burdens and sins kind of drop from you. Like the way water slips from a lotus leaf. And you almost have a clear mind just dedicating your dharma. So I could imagine for the two uh, two weeks of in a two weeks, right? Some earlier program, the mind was just for the Dharma and the mind was happy. So it is with that it gives leaves such a strong imprint on Chaitin.
So I think even if we're changing this world, the strong imprints will help her or support her. Right? It's just a very strong karma will support her. And uh, for all the activities that she has done, all the wonderful uh, support that she has given for uh, performing dharma activities, meditation, profiting dharma, also is just a problem thing. I must also say that. And uh, so we must say that at BGF we have the good fortune to know both Sister Cheng Yin and Sister Ho Kwan Ping, and who have contributed so much for the Buddhist community. We treasure their friendship. We miss their friendship. And their sudden demise uh, makes us think that, like what Venerable Arendt is mentioning, let us think that our lives here is really not that it's as permanent as what we like to think. But meanwhile, what we can, we use the opportunity to create good merits. Because eventually it's a good merits that will accompany us, that will support us. And uh, so it is a great opportunity to be involved in Bijan. For those of you who are involved in Bijan, please use this opportunity for your own cultivation and also to serve. Uh, serve with the dedication, with a clear mindedness, with a sincerity. Because that uh, good karma will support. And I believe this good karma will support the rebirth process of both Sister Kampeng and Sister Jane, that they be born in some happy states. And may this marriage be the condition for them to realize the path and fusion leading to Nibbana. Thank you, Dr. Sweet. Next, we'd like to invite Sister Elaine to read out a eulogy sent by one of Sister Cheng Yin's friends, colleagues, a former CMB colleague. Respected Mahasanghas and friends, yeah, I received a message from uh, Lui Lai Ching, who is a Sister Ching Yin's colleague in a CIMB. Uh, she's supposed to come, but she got official duties in Penang, and she's only flying back this afternoon. So she asked me to read out uh, her eulogy. Eh? She said, and I am Lai Ching, and I got to know Sister Ching Yin while we were working in the same CIMB bank building. When I first knew her, Sister Ching Yin was already the head of corporate banking at CIMB and many of her colleagues viewed Sister Ching Yin as a very kind and considerate boss to all the staff under her department. Although I didn't work directly under her, I got to know her after attending a few meetings together. I can recall many years ago when Sister Ching Yin was admitted to the hospital for her surgery, I went with a few colleagues to visit her, and though she was still weak after her surgery, she remained calm and was still able to share with us her surgery experience then. Sister Ching Yin was a very friendly person, and then when she had early retirement from the bank, I must say, I do feel quite sad for losing such a good and kind senior colleague. When Sister Ching Yin retired, she then became quite active in BGF during charities and many donations drive. That's when we continue to keep in touch as she continued to send us these charity event invitations and was kind enough to go back to the bank to send us those donation dinner tickets, knowing we all were working quite late during the weekdays. I really appreciate and am grateful to Sister Ching Yin. She had done it all in her own ways to contribute especially towards Dharma work and BGF events. A few years back, Sister Ching Yin knowing I was a great fan of Achan Brahm's Dharma talk, was kind to send me an invitation to join her and a few BGF members to go to Perth 
to Acham Brahm's monastery to celebrate his birthday that year and also to attend the silence meditation retreat. I'm really very happy and again grateful for her invitation and will cherish our very happy memories on that Perth trip with many good and fun photos together as well. After our trip to Perth, Sister Qingying then had also invited me to join her at a Dr. Victor's Wee's trip to Tibet as a roommate, which I was very happy to go with her to that special Tibet trip as well. We had such good fun and had memories together with many photos taken as well again. It's during these trips together that I got to know more about Sister Ching, Ching Yim, that she really enjoyed and looking forward to going to visit her two daughters, which she told me one of them resides in Brisbane and another somewhere in USA. She really loves her two daughters and miss them very much. She, in, she even invited me to join her visit in the near future if got chance. Unfortunately, I didn't even once get to join her for her visit to her daughters. Sister Chin was like a big sister to me, as I don't have one on my own. In addition, she was indeed a very kind, patient and considerate friend. I wish Sister Chin Yin now rest in peace and may you gain a good rebirth and gain enlightenment in her future life. Thank you, Lai Ching. Thank you, Sister Lin. I'd like now to give my eulogy as the uh, Dhamma Dutta at school because she was my right hand person. She was assisting a lot in doing a lot of Dhamma work in Bijia. So today we come together to remind ourselves of how our lives have been touched for the better by the late, the beloved, dearly beloved sister Che Kui Ching Im. All of us have known her, and uh, you always see her with a big smile on her face uh, and a very cheerful, good morning. Normally when we greet people, they just say morning, right? She would say good morning, emphasize on the word good. And uh, we also never hear of her complaining about or bad-mouthing others. During the BGF AGMs, she is also one of the very few who will speak up if she sees something not right with the accounts or any of the procedures. And uh, we owe her a debt of gratitude for BGF's entry to the TBCM, the Theravada Buddhist Council. It's also through her propose, proposing a motion to join TBCM during one of our AGMs. I first met Sister Cheng back in 1979 when I joined the UC Malaya. Buddhist society. Back then, if you are from Penang or Malacca, you'll be rolled into the uh, committee. So, we, she used to hang out with the more senior members like Brother Baksun, and uh, we'll go out for Dharma talks all over the place on our Honda C70s. The, those days. Uh, so, then we lost touch after graduation. She went on to work in KL in the banking sector. The rest I went down to Malacca and uh, I, I started a Buddhist graduate scholarship in Malacca, the Malacca chapter like Dr. Sri was saying just now. And uh, that time my brother, the late Sao Chong, was my, the president whom I dealt with a lot. And uh, our paths crossed again when I moved back to PJ. When, when I came back to PJ in 2008, I was actually helping out with the Buddhist uh, uh, Pass Yutama Buddhist Vihara, and uh, I was helping there with uh, teaching public speaking to the kids there. Then uh, Dato Victor heard that I was back here, and he approached me to help out BGM. But uh, I, I thought that BGM didn't really need help, so I, I stayed out. And it was only on the third approach by Sister Cheng Im and uh, Sister Elaine here, at the office down here, after we moved here, that uh, they really say that BGM really, really needs help especially the Dhamma Tutta team. That was then that I came in to help out with uh, Brother Lai here. So, she promised that uh, she would help me with the admin work and she, true to her word, she was our Dhamma Tutta administrator. She would take care of the accounts, the 
and registration of uh, workshops. So I would do the job of organizing, inviting the monks or speakers for the event, and she would do the registration, calling the participants, uh, reconciling the payments, and uh, etc. And uh, even though she came from a very high level position, corporate position, she was humble enough to like uh, collect the food packets that we ordered, put it on the tables, and even wash up the dishes after the event. So and sweep the floors, pop the floors. You 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 looking at her, you wouldn't have realized that she was actually from a very high level corporate position, head of corporate banking in a CMB. So it is a lesson that we can learn from humility that all of us can learn. And also every Wednesday morning, she will join us for hiking at Bukit Tiara. I started a hiking group to promote fellowship and also because I love hiking. So we, we should come over to my place every Wednesday morning and uh, park her car there and then we will drive to Bukit Kiara. So we will do a two hour hike after which we will adjourn for fellowship lunch. So this was our weekly routine. And she's also very uh, very regimented in uh, caring for other groups like her. If you invite her out for Mondays, she'll say, no, no, Monday is my day for video conferencing with my daughters. So she has a daughter in the US and a one in Australia. Her daughter is here, right back right there. Okay. So, so and also she has a Tuesday morning reserved for breakfast where she does yoga classes and other days for her hot colleagues from and also uh, her, her old friends from the Penang. So, Sister Jamie was also a very avid gardener, a very proud of a garden patch. She once told me that uh, during the MCO, she has enough produce, no need to go marketing for all the vegetable needs throughout the MCO you now. Wow, that's fantastic. And uh, the last few months before she passed away, she, was, she joined the Samaneri program organized by Aya Sumangala here at the Brahma Vihara in Malacca. And after that, I invited her to join us for a trip to Sasana Raka, Buddhist sanctuary in, in Taipei. Because I was going to, I think going to pick up my son or send my son over. Okay, uh, my son is a venerable Panya Dabika. So we, we decided to send him over to, to and uh, also invited Cheney to come along. And uh, she was very happy because uh, we introduced everyone to everyone that uh, this is the wife of uh, Venerable uh, Aliya Dasana and uh, everyone was very glad to meet her. And uh, so when we end, I'd like to give an analogy that Achan Pram always uses when he talks about uh, deaths and all this. He says that when you attend a symphony, he says think of uh, a person dying as a, a symphony and uh, at the end of the orchestra, do you feel sad or do you just uh, be grateful that you've uh, enjoyed the music, the, the good symphony. So let us be grateful that uh, our lives have been touched for the better by the late sister Cheng Yim. Let us remember her kind deeds and the wonderful time spent with her and wish her to be happy wherever she is reborn. May she rejoice in the merits generated by us through our efforts to propagate the Buddha Dharma. Sadhu, sadhu, sadhu. So with this, we come to the end of the uh, puja and the eulogies and. Uh,